So a couple days ago, a damning document on Pokimane was leaked, which was written by Fedmeister in retaliation to Pokimane lying about him on her stream after he got kicked from their group offline TV. The document is very long but revealing, so I do recommend you check it out. The link to that will be in the description, but today we are going to be talking about the aftermath of the leak. As when it happened, Pokimane decided to get into a call with Fedmeister, and it resulted in him posting this tweet that links to a Google document titled Re-Leak slash Pokimane. In it, he says, Hey guys, it's been brought to my attention that a document I wrote many months ago has been leaked. I want to make it clear that this is not something I wanted out publicly. The document was leaked by someone I asked for advice and support, who chose to maliciously violate my trust. A while ago, Pokey and I spoke about what happened. We came to agree that keeping things private and making no further statements publicly was what was best for both of us. To keep the document private, we wanted to heal and prevent any further harm to the people involved. She would make a brief supportive statement when I returned, and we would go our separate ways. No more drama and not reopening old wounds. We were both happy with this agreement and the peace of mind that came with it, but one of the people I had turned to for advice and support, when I needed it the most, violated my trust, sending the document to streamers. I just want to apologize, as I do feel responsible for such extremely sensitive and private conversations to be aired out like dirty laundry. When I wrote this statement months ago, I was encouraged by my friends to write out my side of things. However, I did it feeling extremely vindictive as I felt that someone that I once deeply cared for inaccurately spoke out against me. To this day, I do believe that I was mischaracterized. However, after talking to Pokey, I came to understand her perspective and decision making. My outlook on the situation as a whole now comes from a better place of understanding. Additionally, after hearing her side about Yvonne almost getting fired, it was made clear to me that the point of her bringing that up wasn't to allude to the false claim I wanted her fired, but more so to highlight the fact that her lack of motivation to work with me stemmed from her feeling uncomfortable because of our incident, which, again, as I said in the document, I am deeply sorry for and wish I wasn't so naive and insensitive. On the topic of whether I tried to manipulate our friends to hate her, I still fully stand behind what my document reads, but want to further emphasize that although it wasn't my intention to shine Pokey in a bad light, when I'd vent slash confide to our friends about my frustrations, the side effect was that many of our friends perceived her differently, and in turn, avoided pursuing friendships with her. They then admitted this to her after the intervention, so I now better understand understand why she felt manipulated. I know a lot of details surrounding the nature of our friendship were shown, but I'd like to be the first to prevent any further speculation by saying we were never intimate or in a relationship. Pokey and I were very close and often flirty, but that was the extent of it. I know the way things unfold in the document, it seems like I'm alluding to her leading me on, but I don't believe that and I think that the truth is somewhere in between. We both made mistakes and have owned up to them privately. I hope everyone reading will move on from this, as we certainly have already. Please respect our privacy and avoid sharing or discussing this leak, as it's a gross invasion of privacy, and I regret that it was made public. Fed. So previously Fed said the relationship was intimate, and now he's saying it isn't. I'm going to show some text from the document, and let you guys decide if this is intimate or not. If you want to see the full thing, again, that will be linked in the description. Anyways, after after this was posted, Pokey reacted to it on her live stream, along with the entire document. Let's see if her explanation is as convincing as Fed is saying here. I've seen this document. I've seen three versions of this document already. Um, because as you can tell, it was made months ago. It has not been two months since the incident. When I confronted him about finding out about this document, it was the first time that we've spoken since everything unfolded. And it wasn't easy, but we came to a decent understanding of each other and wanting to handle it privately, which is why it's so unfortunate that this was leaked anyways. Very unfortunate. And he says that basically the purpose is that when he saw my stream where I talked about it, him, it he feels like it painted him in a very negative light. I understand from his perspective, it seems like that, but obviously, I feel like I also spoke my truth at the end of the day. You know, there's two sides to every story, so. There was a Taiwan trip, February 14th, 2018. Valentine's Day, woo. Um, almost three years ago now. And that was the first time that, like, you know, me and Fed had, like, flirted or gotten close. Or it essentially, it was when we first started getting close. <laughs> you guys fucking eating popcorn? <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> this is my real life. <laughs> Insert very cringy text messages that have no place on the internet, but um, yeah, I mean, essentially, me and Fed had just gotten really close, although we obviously weren't like dating, we were like talking, you know, and we lived together. It's so, like, yeah, we were able to hang out a lot and we worked together. So 
yeah, we became close. In March 2018, we had an honest discussion about the direction we were heading, and she brought up some notable problems. A, that we live together and could be a problem if things don't work out, and B, we are board members slash own equity of the company that we work for. This could be a conflict of interest and could get nasty if things didn't work out between us. So I am very much of that mindset where it's like, if there are so many conflicts in regards to me pursuing something with someone, I am highly unlikely to do it unless I felt like, wow, like this is the person for me. Sorry, I need to let my cat in. Definitely, this was like the first time we got to know each other and therefore like kind of the flirtiest time in my opinion. But then I was like, oh, we can't really do this unless, again, I feel like this is something we seriously want to pursue. Uh, of course, it was pretty obvious to him that I was texting Pokey. And I actually remember this, that we were texting and I think just like alluding to our manager and Josh that we were talking. He goes on to say like, I'm a really private person and that he shouldn't have alluded to someone that we were talking. But actually, in this instance, we really like were this was the first time that we started talking and we were starting to talk pretty seriously. And I was like, I need to figure out whether this is something that I want to pursue and risk the conflict of interest or just something I'm not interested in. So I actually don't really care about this at all. Where he's like, I shouldn't have overshared. This was not my issue at this point in time. <laughs> I feel like I need to understand the boy scene a little bit more. I mean, you know, I was like 20, 21 in LA, single, freshly in LA, whatever the heck, right? I wanted to be sure of whoever I was going to pursue. Um, and also for Fed, as I said here, also he should date around because like I, I also didn't like the um, online pressure of people shipping us. And I don't like the idea of like falling into it just because there's pressure. I think it is much healthier to pers to like get a good lay of the land and pursue someone because you genuinely, genuinely like them, not just because there's like internet attention around your names. Uh, for me then, this came out of left field and I felt pretty stupid, I was hurt, blah, blah. I do remember having this conversation and I was investing so much time, I was trying to be understanding, but it brought up a lot of insecur insecurities and notions of not being good enough. And for me, it was like, I just need to figure out whether I like actually like someone or not. We're physically really close and that makes you feel like maybe someone's like the right person, but anyways oh my god this is so cringe because like i'm not like massively older and massively more mature but i really was that i was like don't like call me pet names unless we're dating <laughs> because i feel like it's just a line i draw you know shit but you know whatever i think it's a part he skipped over in his document but there's vods of this after edc i went to canada around that time to visit my parents and he had surprise visited me in Canada. Again, around the time that we first started talking, I was like, mm, do I like him, do I not? And then uh, when he showed up, I was really flattered by that because I don't have like a shit ton of dating experience and no one had ever done such like an extravagant thing per se to surprise me. So I was like, oh, maybe I should give him a chance. And so in Canada, I was like trying to open my heart up to the idea a bit more um but i realized it just didn't feel right essentially and i was like oh okay now i know like this is not something that i want to pursue so when we came back home again mayish i had that talk with him may 2018 i believe i had that talk with him and i was like because i remember it was an emotional talk and i was like listen dog blah 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 <laughs> to me it was like I've had this conversation with you. Admittedly, in hindsight, it was selfish that like, I wanted to like still be friends and still be close. But I think he read that as like signs of maybe wanting more. But in my mind, I was like, I already had this convo with you of like not wanting more. There was like this cycle of like, we'd get close and I'd be like, ah, oh, I, I think like y you think this is headed in a way that it's not headed. Like we can't be like this close. Um, Cause like boundaries would be pushed and blah, blah, blah. I also want to say that I feel he implied we were heavily involved when me and Fed were never intimate, we were never sexual. And also I knew and anyone who has watched his stream like he's kind of a flirty guy right um so as cringy as these are i don't think these texts from three years ago are indicative of much in regards to the things that i said were problematic in my first stream which i will get to essentially people reading this document may feel like i lied 
about there being something going on between me and Fed. I understand where that comes from completely. I just want to explain that I was trying to share a very specific instance where I felt Fed lied about the state of our friendship or relationship. And it happened much later than these texts in Taiwan. It happened way after May when he visited and I had that conversation with him of like, listen, I I just want to be friends. Genuinely speaking, uh, I can't say that either of us maneuvered the situation as best as we could, but I always tried to be so upfront about like, I just want to be friends. I'm seeing other people like, yeah, I want to be close to you. I st obviously still want to be your friend. Like you're a really important person in my life. And I understand those signs are probably misconstrued. But that's why I was so open about like, oh, I'm really excited for like this person to come to the party. I want to talk to this person, that person, blah, blah, blah. He told Steve essentially that we were a thing long after I had this conversation with him about I just want to be friends. So that's why I mentioned that specific part on my stream. So I understand now people are like, yeah, but you guys flirted, so you had a thing. In my mind, it was like, we flirt here, we end here. And then he fucks up way over here. I hope that makes sense. To me, this was an incident with Steve, an incident that was very clearly a mess up on Fed's part, because when he told Steve that night, oh yeah, me and Pokey have a thing. Steve told me, and I said, no, we don't. I confronted Fed about it. Fed apologized and said, oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Like, yeah, it was my bad. I didn't want something happening, blah, blah, blah. So to me, it was like, oh, you admitted fault. Like, you know that what you did was wrong. Um, and also, prior to the first stream I did where I spoke about everything, uh, I messaged Fed and I said, I'm going to speak out about things because I feel like people are being really harsh towards Lily and Yvonne and they're not believing them. Is there anything that you would really want me to leave out? I don't know if I can accommodate, but I also don't want to make things terribly difficult for you. I won't mention some, some, um, or super personal details, mainly some lies and instances where people felt manipulated. And he said, if you can find it in you to leave out telling like the situation where I told Steve that you and I were a thing. It's something I would just not like mentioned, but I understand if not. Otherwise, I trust you and I think doing what's best for Lily and Yvonne's comfort is the right play. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't leave that out because it's the best slash easiest example I can give of lying or like some form of manipulation. So again, this is the only thing I am willing to include, like just as an actual fact check of like, he asked me not to mention this thing, which to me is like an admission of guilt, essentially. But now, months later, he's saying, oh, no, that's not how it went down. And you know what? It's his prerogative to say that. But obviously, I have been told and have been believing what I've been told for however long. So that was my truth in regards to this happening. It really bothered me that in this document, he tried so hard to paint me as the bad guy or like leading him on when I felt I was always honest. And I know there are parts in here where he's like, yeah, and sometimes she would like hang out with guys at the house. And it was like, it felt really bad for me. And you know what? I get that. But I hope you guys can also see from my perspective, that was me trying to be upfront about like, I am dating, I'm seeing people like, again, I am not pursuing a future between the two of us. But anyways, looking back, I should have been more aware and careful of how I acted around him. So there are no signals to misread, but you know, hindsight 2020. And I learned a lot from the situation. To me, in all honesty, all of this is really not all that important. It's regular 20 year old relationship bullshit. He said, she said, blah, blah, blah. You know, nothing that important happened in my opinion. What I shared about the Steve situation is my honest truth. And I feel like it is just really irrelevant in comparison to the incident that actually triggered all of this. That's unfoundedly slanderous. I'm so sorry, that wording makes me laugh a bit. As much in, as me and Fed like kind of got along, we just are such different people and we see things so differently. So the way he sees it is like, oh, I'm just like venting to my friends because I need to let my emotions out. For me, I tried really hard not to vent to people within or very close to OTV about Fed because I knew that essentially it's kind of like shit talking him and then they're gonna see him differently and it's just gonna fuck with the dynamic. But I don't think he realized 
that aspect of things. I'd rarely talk to the other girls about my issues with Pokey. From my perspective and from what I've heard, that doesn't seem true. He also mentions talking to Lily. He mentions talking to another girl at Just Friends. And again, just not what I really heard. He was very frustrated by the fact that I was saying, all of these people around me have come to me and told me that they essentially avoided being my friend because of things you had told them. Um, and that made them feel manipulated. That made me feel manipulated. But it wasn't his intention and he wasn't trying to be manipulative. So you see how it's a bit of a fine line. He was really unhappy being painted as a manipulator when in reality, he was just inconsiderate in the way that he was talking about me. But to us, it just felt manipulative because we're like, oh, we just missed out on friendships we could have had all along, essentially. This is the truth. Pokey would generally only come over if there was something she could tangibly benefit from in some way. Large streaming events, midnight birthday streams. It's the same reason you never saw her come into people's streams at OTV. And when she wasn't streaming, she was also always grinding or practicing whatever game she wanted to get better at for stream. I don't want to go into this too deep. Uh, sorry. <laughs> because I'm not here to attack her character, but it's just the way things were. My side. Hello, it is me, Pokey, the actual person doing these things. It is so weird to, like, by a friend, try to be painted as, like, this, like, ruthless businesswoman. Like, yeah, I, I mean, streaming is such a cool career. Of course, it's something that I care about a lot, that I was especially really interested in then. Um, I've learned to balance my life a bit better. But I just want to say, these are none of the reasons why it was sometimes difficult for me to hang out with other people. It wasn't because I wanted something out of them. I mean, I can't even recall anything that I could gain from like streaming events at other people's houses, midnight birthday streams. I'm like one head in the back of like 20. The reason these were a bit easier for me to go to is because like, well, it's someone's birthday. I want to go say happy birthday. But when it comes to like, oh, let me just uber over to their house at a point in time where I didn't have solid friendships with these people essentially like the things that he had said to people i could tell that there were just bad vibes you know what i mean i think you guys know what i mean like sometimes you get that sentiment that someone just sees you differently or like isn't really open to wanting to be your friend that's why like i couldn't drive over at 10 p.m like he perhaps felt comfortable too and i felt more comfortable in large settings i remember this thought pattern that i had a lot and that i even shared with him where i was like do you think i like come off as intimidating to some people or something like am i hard to approach sometimes i want to be friends with people but i feel like i don't get that same feeling back i know this is something i shared with him and it has nothing to do with me profiting off of who oh mega lol? I don't even know, you know? I'm not saying this is entirely Fed's fault. It, I, like, to some extent, it was also me, but I know that after the intervention, it felt like there was like this barrier lifted between me and so many other people. And now my friendships is just like tremendously better than it was before. And I believe this. I don't think he was actively trying to make people not want to be my friend, even though that's what he ended up doing. Um, and this wasn't a conclusion that I tried to come to at all. It was one that was almost like hurtfully thrown in my face when we held these interventions. And I spoke out about my feelings and so many people came up to me and apologized and told me that they saw me in a different light because of things Fed said. So yeah, uh, the same thing has happened to me. You know, sometimes he has mentioned certain things to me and maybe he doesn't think that it'll have an impact on the way that I see someone, but it does. And then I kind of avoid being their friend. But then later on, I find out that they're actually really great people I would have gotten along with. Um, and it's something that just happens in friend groups, okay? It just fucking happens. Unfortunately, the way it happened with Fed was like a bit of a larger scale and a bit more only about me. Steve told me Fed said, you guys are seeing each other, and he told me not to tell you that I know. And he's saying that that's not true, but I confronted Fed about it the very next day. I told Fed that I would talk about it prior to my stream when I spoke about the Yvonne and Lily situation. I feel like that's all that I can do. And he did not say that any of it was false up until very recently. And then he talks more about 
how we would get closer when I wasn't seeing someone. And I think that's fair. But also to me, it was like, for me, like my boundary of we're seeing each other isn't like, oh, we're like hanging out, we're close, this and that. So I think it was just like a messy situation in general. Again, not saying I handled it the best. Uh, not saying he handled it the best either. Again, some, some of this stuff is tough to read because I feel like him being like, she's lying to thousands of people. It's just like him venting and isn't really meant to be out there. And I think even now, as he said in his statement, like he realizes that all I was saying was my truth. I have no reason to lie about him. There's just really no need. This, this text, I regret so much. I don't really know why he included like this text where I was being very petty towards Jody. I think this was like two or three houses ago when Jody was first entering the friend group and I had like heard perhaps some like not the best things and so my perception was skewed and I just said some petty stuff that is bad. And I want you guys to know actually that when I first saw this document and I spoke to Fed about it and we resolved things privately, I immediately, like as soon as I saw that text message, I immediately went to Jody and I was like, listen, this is never gonna be public, but I want to apologize for what I said because it's just BM and stupid and she is such a lovely person, such a lovely friend of mine now. And I just regret ever saying that about her. It felt like me and Fed were like best friends at one point and there were things that probably came off to him as like more romantic that to me were just like all like, I love you so much as a friend, which is so cringe to say, and I've learned my lesson. <laughs> also, everybody in the friend group like called each other honey bunny, which is like cringe again. Um, but like, also, this is the way that I act with a lot of my girlfriends. I understand you don't act this way with your guy friends, but again, learn and lesson. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, it feels so weird to talk about this because it really is just like cringe. <laughs> Um, I think the Yvonne situation is important to address though, so let's get into it. Here's my TLDR. From my stream talking about Fed, Fed felt like it made it seem like I was saying he was trying to get Yvonne fired. In reality, I was trying to say that Fed didn't directly try to do that, but she was almost let go from OTV because she had a lack of motivation towards the work, but her lack of motivation stemmed from what Fed had done to her. I'm genuinely sorry to you guys, the public, if I didn't convey that message properly the first time that I said it, but that's what I meant. And that led into all of these conversations that you see where we're like, do we need to get someone else on board? What are we doing? Like, we need to fix things, blah, 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 blah. That's where it all stemmed from, but in reality, like, it was nothing that was actually wrong with her, and it was from the situation that occurred. And yeah, I was also very frustrated thinking back to times where I didn't know about what happened and he would complain about her to me. And I'm like a pretty business oriented person. And I'm like, I don't want OTV to die. What do we do? We need to fix this problem. Like, I think that's essentially what these text messages are. Do you guys hear my stomach? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I've been up for like 30 hours and I haven't eaten since yesterday. <laughs> I'll eat after. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, let me get through this. For me, it's like, if she doesn't want this position, like we should get someone else, like a biz dev, someone who's really passionate about it, blah, blah, blah. And it makes me mad to see me talk like this because me at that time had no motherfucking clue what happened between Fed and Yvonne and why she was acting this way. Does that make sense? Okay, thanks. I think that makes sense. <laughs> Quick side note, OTV has a bit of a problem where people in the past that we've hired for specific positions slowly turned into content creators. So that was a bit of a sore spot, especially for me. And so I was like, ah, please no, another one bites the dust. Like I don't want that to happen. But really all it needed was like a good conversation between me and her and everything was resolved after. And I was like, no, we can make this work. Like I can see that's not your end goal. So she's such a special part of OTV that obviously we wanted to make it work. I, I, I don't want it like personally, M the stuff relating to me, sure. Cool with her going the content creator route. She responds with no. She started complaining that she was getting sponsor deals, posting a lot on her YouTube, etc. She said it's very weird, I'm all. I just wanna clarify again, 
Yvonne, get that bag, whoever get that bag. <laughs> the same thing had happened to us in the past, and I just didn't want someone else to like be brought on board and then just become a content creator. That's what I was bothered about. If she's like, uh, but again, we had the conversation later on where she's like, no, like that's not my end goal. And I like what I do with OTV. And that was enough reassuring, reassurement for me. This is me trying to make sure offline TV doesn't die. <laughs> I don't really know what he's trying to show by these messages, but I've always been someone in the group who's like, guys, we need like consistency. We need to make sure we have someone focusing on the group. And what happened was that if you guys remember during quarantine, Fed started streaming a lot more. And he kind of stopped being our main content guy. And can I just say, at this point, none of this matters because OTV has been fucking great for like half a year. Because we now have like a decent amount of employees doing an amazing job. And I no longer have conversations like this because things are running smoothly and I'm so happy about it. It's so sad to have these random one-off out of context screenshots leaked to try to make me look bad when in reality i'm just saying like i care about this thing i want to make sure it works what do we do if yvonne does want to be a full does want to be a full-time creator what do we do now that we don't have someone working on this on the, like that's really all that i'm trying to do i hope you guys can see that i show these dms because they further show that i had no interest in see in no interest in seeing yvonne fired But they're DMs of ma like of me. It doesn't even have anything to do with him, in my opinion. But again, this is all irrelevant because Fed now understands. I wasn't saying he was trying to get her fired. I know this will in no way clear my name, but it's been hard to sleep at night when I know there's so much misinformation, spiteful narratives. Blah, blah, blah. I also don't think he feels this way anymore. I think I have always been very clear that the only reason I spoke out about my negative experiences with Fed was because, I don't know if you guys remember, but when Lily and Yvonne first came out with their statements, people were like shitting on them. And it was really just not okay. And I felt that I had to speak to his character in a sense. To this day, I know that's something that was very impactful for both Lily and Yvonne. And I know Lily literally removed her tweet because of all the shit she was getting. I think he said something about me collecting information uh, any information I was collecting was for the uh, intervention. I did have a lot of pent up resentment towards Fed, but that's one of the main reasons why I tried to move out. I felt like it was a me problem. I was like, listen, we have like baggage. Our friendship is not what it once was. And I saw him differently, he probably saw me differently, and I was like, you know what, I love OTV, I don't want to cause any issues, so I started making plans to move out. Because I also think there are like all these conspiracy theories that like, I wanted fed out of OTV or stuff like that. I want to make it really clear, I had no agenda when it came to fed, and I think the biggest testament to that is that I moved out before he did. I was planning to move out to deal with my own resentment towards him and my own issues way before Yvonne came out with her statement and before Fed left the house. I think if I wanted to kick him out, like I would have just stayed and tried to, you know, like to me, it just doesn't make sense. But also to further elaborate on why I moved out, I just wasn't close enough with anybody else in the house back then. I also felt like there were barriers in certain places there, which luckily, have broken down over the last few months and I'm so happy like I have never loved everybody in OTV more than I do today. Prior to that, prior to moving out, I just felt like Fed was the closest person I was with, our friendship had kind of soured, and I wasn't as close with anyone else. So I was like, listen, I'm just gonna take myself out of the equation so we can still make content together and everybody is happy together and I'm gonna go live with some girls, no boy drama, and hopefully also a better separation of my work and personal life because that is of large importance to me. One hour later, she unfollowed me off all social media and two hours later, she posted this tweet with comments taken straight from my post. It seems she is less interested in seeing me change and more interested in seeing me canceled. And okay, he did post this like a month after everything happened. 
And I did tweet. I was like, in this industry, a girl fucks up. What a fake bitch. A guy fucks up. OMG King, don't worry. Everybody makes mistakes. <laughs> and I won't lie. That is some petty shit I did. <laughs> I am not going to sit here and be like, they're unrelated. You, you know, like, yeah, I saw it and I was like, I feel like it's a bit soon. Um, and I just, you know, I didn't want to see it. And maybe I tweeted a little petty thing or not. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is like something I'm supposed to apologize for. I think I'll just admit like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I did this. Is it the nicest thing? No, but also I was just so over it. This also stems a little bit from seeing different situations with others. I don't know, I'll say some weird shit like six years ago and randoms will like never let it go. <laughs> So I did feel a bit of like personal, uh, like personally slighted. So I know this is also a sort of insecurity of mine, but also just being a petty bitch sometimes. <laughs> Essentially, he's saying like, after the intervention, I spoke to some people about it and the way those people talked to people in OTV about it made OTV feel like I wasn't taking it seriously, even though Fed felt he was taking it seriously. And again, when I found this document, I actually had a very upfront conversation with him about like, these are the specific things you did and said that made us think you weren't taking what we said very seriously and also making us feel like you were kind of just trying to figure out what was next for you as opposed to really reflecting on your your past mistakes. And he was like, oh, okay, I understand that. What we released publicly was always in Yvonne's hands. And I think that's how it should be. I would never pressure someone to talk about some talk about something so personal publicly. And that's just the way we went about it. I really wanted to, at the very least, have that private intervention and hope that he gets better. But when it comes to how we handled it publicly, that's a group decision and an Yvonne decision. I mean, an Yvonne decision in regards to what she says publicly, but how we handle it is a group decision. Fed did some really distasteful things that many of our friends spoke out about. It just feels like an unnecessary diversion from the more important things. I do understand he feels that he was made to look worse than he is, but two wrongs don't make a right. And this document is just so wrong on so many levels. He was close to me for two plus years. Sure, he has a lot of texts that could make me look sus, especially out of context. I'd like to think that I've grown since then, but also if the worst what I've said or done is like some small petty stuff, I feel like it's still pretty far from the incident that triggered all of this. It doesn't change what he did. Also, I understand the conspiracy theories are enticing, but there is no big bad ruthless businesswoman decisions being made here. Uh, we've always told Yvonne that when it comes to this very delicate matter, it is entirely up to her. And OTV is like fucking 23 people. I'm just kidding, like five six, seven, something like that. And I don't control it. I just really don't. Um, of course I have a say and I'm always trying to do what is best. I'm not always perfect, but yeah. Ultimately, I think it's fair to say that there's my truth, there's his truth, and the actual truth is probably somewhere in between. Uh, I'm not perfect, I'm far from, same with Fed. I am really sad that what was once such a close friendship of mine has turned into all of this. Like, it genuinely feels, like, surreal. I don't know how the fuck I'm gonna mentally process that. Um, and I really hope to never have a public feud like this ever, ever again. I'm genuinely trying not to be involved in drama, hence why I spoke to him about this document weeks ago, privately, and we came to an agreement on how to handle the situation. It is unlucky that he shared it with someone who then leaked it. I hope I can show you guys who I genuinely am, who I want to be, by hopefully avoiding or properly handling these types of conflicts because I really don't enjoy being in this situation. He brings up a fair point where he says I lied about not knowing what happened between him and Yvonne. Uh, on my stream, I said how I was so upset Thinking back at the times, I was worried about Yvonne's behavior and how she, how 
much she was or wasn't dedicated to OTV, when in reality she was acting out a certain way because of what Fed did to her. And I think the way he interpreted it, and perhaps the way it was understood publicly also, is uh, me pretending like I didn't know. But what I meant was that I hadn't known for so many months. And then there was a point in time where I heard about what had happened, but I did not have full details. I didn't know about it to the extent that it was spoken about publicly, uh, whether on Dr. Kate or in the statement. I didn't know it happened twice. You know, like I just heard that something inappropriate had happened between Fed and Yvonne. But prior to me hearing about this, which was at least half a year after the actual incident, there was a half of a half a year of me like essentially like seeing Yvonne in a light that was false. Does that make sense? This is like cringe overlord for me. Overlord? Overload. I'm the overlord. <laughs> but yeah. Is it over? Bridge burned forever. Um, I think we are on decent terms, actually. I mean, we talked about this. I think we all want to move the fuck on. Oh my god, Feds and chat. God, my life is so fucking weird! Ah! <laughs> Are you gonna cry? <laughs> Does Fed know you're talking about it now? Well, yeah, seems like it. <laughs> All right, sorry. Back, back to the questions. What's up? <laughs> Why did you say that Fed shit talked Yvonne when he wanted Yvonne to stay, and you in reality wanted Yvonne fired? Seems like you're changing your first story. I never wanted Yvonne fired. I wanted OTV to always be working and consistent, and because of that, we did have to have conversations about Yvonne's position and role within the company. Fed did complain about Yvonne to people, not just to me, and that is what I'm referring to. Why would you say two wrongs don't make a right when Fed didn't even want the document to be pub public? It was good for Fed to write out his feelings and then get a better understanding, which he admitted. Because the document is still out there and it was still created. And until we had come to a private agreement it was going to be released genuine question i don't have any particular side but do you think nobody will notice how deliberately vague you're being while skipping over every screenshot from fed that contradicts what you're saying about the sexual slash romance talk you repeatedly push and pull him away whilst being occasionally so possessive of him that you're spiteful over jody simply mentioning him on stream thought maybe um that's fair i think i skip over some of the texts that i feel don't really add much value like yeah we flirted i don't know what else there is really for me to say um the jody thing was just like an unfortunate petty thing uh i really i actually wasn't trying to be possessive of him at the time also all of these screenshots are from like wildly different times so if you see screenshots from like when we were talking and then when we weren't and then from back then later on you're gonna think that it's like a constant push and pull but that was never my intention and yep clock if a girl flirts omg you let him on if a guy fucks up and sexually harasses someone omg stop i shouldn't have read that one but that's true uh sorry not the whole thing i just mean like i don't know why people want me to go into text where i'm like you're cute like who the fuck cares like, this shit should not be out there anyways. What do you want me to say? That's what I'm confused about. Is the drama over? Me hope so. All I'm saying is, like, I really feel like in the grand scheme of things, when or when not me and Fed were flirty or should have been or shouldn't have been or whatever, it's like, it's just not that important, in my opinion. Do you guys remember what triggered this whole manifesto? This whole incident? something completely unrelated so again i'm sorry it's not that i'm trying to like intentionally be vague or pretend like i did nothing wrong it's just like it's just a personal situation i didn't handle it perfectly and he didn't either and that's just that's really just that that's really just that and i feel like further like reading into every word isn't gonna make a difference also people keep bringing up the sleepovers you I don't know if you guys remember, but Fed slept in, like, everybody's room. That was, like, an active meme. He slept in Yvonne's room. He slept in Lily's room. He slept in all the girls' rooms. 
which we later find out probably wasn't the best thing. But when you're in that situation, you're like, oh, well, like, I guess this seems normal. Like, nothing is really happening. So it, like, becomes normal. And I really dislike that you guys are trying to hold that against me when, like, he slept in all the girls' rooms. So I guess we all thought, well, it's normal. It's what friends do. So, yeah, it, it was complicated. I, I don't really see what else you guys would like me to discuss in regards to that. <laughs> Mind your own business. True. Also, I'm so sorry um, if at any point my tone was off or anything like that. Again, I haven't slept in 30 whatever hours. And I haven't eaten in a while. So, I am not in the best state. But I hope that this provided some much needed clarity. Uh, the TLDR is essentially like, shit between me and Fed, we both fucked up and we're both the F over it, really. So we hope that you guys can be too. Um, and everything else is up to you guys to judge because uh, he put his side there, I put mine. And I just ask you guys be reasonable, respectful, and try to perhaps compare it to situations in your life, you know? Uh, again, even Fed knows, like, I never tried to lead him on. Like, there was just a point in time where we flirted, and there were many a point in times where we didn't. And there were a point in times where perhaps he took some of the things that I said as flirting when I didn't mean it that way. And you want to know what? That's life, okay? That is just situations with other humans sometimes. You said that you didn't leave the house because of anyone in your room tour video, but now you're saying that you left because of tension between him and you. Yeah, I specifically remember talking about my room tour and being like, there's no issues, but like, that's just what you do because you love the company you're at and you don't want to cause problems. That's it. What, you wanted me to get up on my room tour and be like, well, listen here, bitches, this is what happened. And this guy said this, but like, I'm just not. <laughs> I think those are like one of the few rare instances where like in my mind it's it's not lying it's just like I don't want to air dirty laundry like no if it needs to be out there probably will someday but like no I was really trying to avoid all that again his story my story and the truth is probably somewhere in between and you guys are welcome to you know choose or like maybe believe one side more than the other or don't or just be like hey this isn't even worth any brain power you guys are welcome to do whatever just please um be respectful towards people regardless of what you believe so that's about it for Pokemon stream response and honestly there's just so much in there to talk about two things in particular that stick out to me is one whenever someone seems to not be on the same page as Pokemon, she has a talk with them and then the decision magically goes into Pokemon's favor whether it be Yvonne focusing more on offline TV work rather than being a content creator or getting Fedmeister to backpedal on some of his valid criticisms of how Pokey treated him to the point where Fed in his new response said that he was never even intimate with Pokemon, which is just just very hard to believe considering what was said in that document. And number two, it's how she minimizes everything. She chalks a lot of it up to, oh, just normal 20 year old dating things. And even towards the end of that stream, someone pointed out that she lied in her vlog saying that nothing was going on badly in offline TV. And she says in her mind, that wasn't even a lie. It was just her not wanting to cause shit. And I get not wanting to cause shit, but I feel like in that vlog, you would just not mention if there is or isn't any troubles in offline TV. I understand why she lied but the fact that she didn't even describe it as lying she said in my mind that isn't even lying just proves that she minimizes a lot of these more severe actions she does into something that isn't as severe which actually causes her to be hypocritical in a lot of situations because i often notice that she does bad things and then criticizes other people heavily for doing those same bad things while excusing her bad things but anyways i could make a whole video talking about that if you want to see that be sure to let me know down in the comment section below but regardless of if i make that specific video or not i'm going to have more coverage on the situation coming out soon so be sure to subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss 
that. Thank you so much to my channel members for supporting the channel, in particular, the Dank Memes Play and Boar. This helps me out immensely and I appreciate it a lot, but with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in another video.